He wants to do things with a different attitude. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina looks to be testing the waters for 2024. The South Carolina Republican gave hints about his candidacy and what it would look like. He pushes a positive message for America and blames Democrats for the political division in America. My focus is still on the mission of making sure that every single American believes that the American dream is achievable for them. The progressive left is trying to make America into a grievance culture when in fact we've always stood on the foundation of greatness. The left is trying to sell a drug of victimhood and the narcotic of despair. The left today, they have, seems to be working on a blueprint on how to ruin America. Jason Chaffetz, Fox News contributor, former Utah congressman. You know what? We don't know how the race is going to shape up so far. We know that President, former President Trump and Nikki Haley are in it, uh, and also Vivek Ramaswamy. H how does Senator Tim Scott fit in with his message? Well, he, he, America needs more Tim Scott and uh, of his message. Uh, I know him exceptionally well, served with him in the House while he was in the House and in, in the Senate. Um, and this is a man of principle. He loves America. He loves America. He, he's lived the American dream. Um, he's got a positive message with legislation to back it up. He understands policy. I, he fits every single thing that I think Republicans are looking for. He's a great messenger on that. He works hard. He works smart. I, I can't say enough good things about Tim Scott, especially his positive approach. It's very Reagan-esque. The latest Fox poll shows how Republican primary voters are, ta are taking uh, a liking or not to potential 24 nominees. Former President Donald Trump tops the list 43 percent. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in second place in this particular poll at 28 percent. And on you go from there. Uh, your take on just watching it kind of unfold. Name recognition has to do a lot with all of this, um, but Trump is still far ahead of the pack. Oh, look, uh, the Trump policies worked. I, I think people uh, yearn for the days uh, when Donald Trump uh, was the president. But I got to tell you, people like Ron DeSantis have a very positive message. They, they've seen him do it in Florida. I, I guess what's good for Republicans is that they have a deep bench. You have people like like a Tim Scott and a Ron DeSantis and others who are actually very capable and, and have all the right resume items to become the president of the United States, contrasted with the Democrats, who really, you scratch your head and think, who in the world could possibly be their next candidate? Even, even the current president is, is question mark to be on, on the ballot. So I, I think the Republicans, it bodes well. Vigorous debate, lots of discussion, yes. up and down and back and forth. But when country gets to know Tim Scott, they're going to love him. All right, let's move on. By the way, I asked Nikki Haley this question last week when I had her on, and I would say this to other candidates as well. Maybe not President Trump, because he talks about the economy a lot, generally speaking. Um, but that's got to be some place where Republicans start to hit. They've, they've got to talk about digging us out of this hole if they want to lead this country. That, that's huge, and I'm not really hearing it. And, and I press Nikki Haley on it, because I've heard her talk uh, about a whole host of other things. But that's what makes you different from the other side. They want to believe that Americans aren't really suffering. They want to believe that it's not really bad to have eggs at, you know, up 70 percent or whatever it is this week. Um, it is an interesting gap, I would just observe. President Biden heading to Virginia this week to talk about health care. Here's the president on going someplace that actually could use his pulpit, East Palestine, Ohio, as that community is still suffering after that massive toxic train derailment. Here's Biden. Pretty planning we travel to South Carolina. Just have a while. I was. I did a whole video. I mean, thing out there. Yeah, at the helm. On um, you? No. Yeah. But the idea that we're not engaged is just simply not not there. Jason. Uh, he's trying to have it both ways. He's trying to say that he did a Zoom call and that should be enough. But then he also says, hey, we're there two hours after the derailment. Uh, the problem is you've got the Ohio Department of Natural Resources saying there are 3,500 dead fish and frogs yeah. in the rivers. But go ahead and drink the water. Um, and, hey, we're here from the government. Trust us. We, we know what we're doing. But all you have to do is look over at Flint, Michigan. They did the exact yeah. same thing. And they, they poisoned those kids. They, they told them to drink the water. They did, and those kids got cancer, for goodness sake. 
It is just absolutely fundamentally wrong. And then they have the toxins and somebody says, hey, you know, if we put a match to it, it will make the environment much better. And you have this huge plume go up in the air. But, oh, no, that's not going to affect it. But don't worry about it. Just go home, breathe the air, drink the water. You'll be fine. We're the government. We know. Oh, by the way, they evacuated according to, and we know this from witnesses that we've talked with and from officials we've talked with on this program, according to the blast site, like where the shrapnel from, from the explosion would have gone, right. uh, what they didn't look at was that actual plume, which is why it's wafted over into and making some people sick who we've interviewed on the show and next door now. Uh, in Pennsylvania. I mean, th this didn't get contained. And the, and the circle that they built to protect people and evacuate, they let them back into that circle far too fast. But we'll get into something else. Critics are not buying anything that the president is selling on Ohio. Let's watch. Joe Biden's been to Ukraine. Now he's coming to Virginia. He has yet to go to Ohio. And he wants to talk about health care. Why doesn't he go someplace where people actually have real health concerns? You've sent a horrible mixed message to this community. Drink the water, don't drink the water. Safe, not safe. You can explain away all day long to me that nothing's wrong, but I, I, I see what's going on here. Make not going to gaslight me. All right, so the team has that a little bit from uh, one of those witnesses who was evacuated and was worried about his four young children. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg now faces an investigation by House Republicans over the administration's response or lack thereof. Lawmakers in his own political party question his actions. People living around that derailment site say despite assurances that the air, water are both safe, they're getting sick. Here is that person who joined the focus with quite a few details. With the EPA there on site and the cleanup of this mat, this massive crash, of all the chemicals that were spilled everywhere and the continuation of them removing cars, and I'm sure there are still chemicals being spilled out of the ground as they're demolishing these cars to haul them off site. They came in there, dug the trench, exploded the car, lit the flares, burned the uh, vinyl chloride off. Now all those chemicals are in the ground. Oh, Jason, first your response, and then I want to tell you what they tried to haul out of the state but had to take back. Well, again, they, their message was, trust us, we're the government. But you know what? The cabinet is a reflection of the president. And this administration has the approach of, hear no evil, see no evil, don't show up, and then we'll pretend that it never happened. They mm -hmm. do that on the border. They do that with our energy sector. They do that with the uh, inflation. And now they're doing it there in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Oh. And, and people are, are really suffering. This is life and death for these people. And you can't show up and listen to them. You can't show up and actually be there to provide solutions and make sure that they protect their homes before they go back in them. It, it, it's been nearly a month since this has happened. Yeah, and if, if the president thinks that this isn't going to touch him, it's slapping him in the face. Did you see those disapproval numbers? 33% of people say, let's pop that back up real quickly because I want people to see that. 33% say they approve. I, I want to know how many they, how they got that many. 57 are against how the president has handled the Ohio train derailment. By the way, they've hauled away and tried other states to take. Uh, so this is, this is far from over, far from over. They have hauled away tons of this with that one gentleman that dad was describing. They were digging trenches to, to get rid of, and it's now in the ground. I mean, it's... And now they're having to take it back from those states that don't want it. Jason, last last word. Yeah, they weren't candid about what's there. And if it was so toxic, why did they decide to burn it? Do you think throwing it up in the air was actually uh. going to make the situation worse? That's what they did. And they, they, they created this toxic plume and had who knows what kind of repercussions. Yeah, I, I don't know, 7,000 tons as we just popped up on the screen. I mean, it's, it's unfathomable and it's not over. Jason, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.